Did you know that St. Augustine, the 4th century father of the church, addressed the Mother of God in these words? Remember, O most pious lady, that it has never been heard that anyone who fled to thy protection was forsaken. Today we face the greatest heresy to ever afflict the church, modernism. Pope St. Pius X described modernism as the synthesis of all heresies. Now consider just for a moment, the Madonna is hailed by the church as conqueror of all heresies. In the Roman Missal, we find in the tract from the common of the Blessed Virgin Mary, these words addressed to her. Rejoice, O Virgin Mary, for alone thou hast put an end to all heresies. Putting two and two together, the solution to eradicating modernism is simple. To be rid of it, and above all, for the good of the whole church and for our own souls, the first thing we must do is cultivate a true devotion to the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the one who crushes the serpent's head. The foundation of such a devotion is the daily rosary. Yes, the rosary every day. It starts there, it builds from there, and it continues there. You're listening to Genesis 315. I will put enmities between thee and the woman, and thy seed and her seed. She shall crush thy head, and thou shalt lie in wait for her heel. I'm Mariana Bartold, the author of Fatima, The Signs and Secrets, and Guadalupe, Secrets of the Image, both which are available at Amazon. Now, you might wonder, why the rosary? Let's hear what Our Lady herself said. Today, I'm going to be sharing an article that I wrote many years ago on this very question, and to which I have added a few more quotes. So, why the rosary? What did Our Lady say? Well, to the three children of Fatima, she said, pray the rosary every day. At each and every apparition, she repeated this motherly command. And when she told them who she was, she said very simply, I am the lady of the rosary. To Blessed Alain de la Roque, she said, when you say your rosary, the angels rejoice, the Blessed Trinity delights in it, my son finds joy in it too, and I myself am happier than you can possibly guess. After the holy sacrifice of the Mass, there is nothing in the church that I love as much as the rosary. To St. Dominic, battling the Albigensian heresy, to whom she had said, Preach my Psalter, and one day through the rosary and the scapular, I shall save the world, Our Lady also said, Be of good courage, Dominic. The fruits of your labors will be abundant. You know how much the salvation of this people has cost my son. He does not wish that the work of salvation shall become useless. Remember then that the redemption of the world was begun by the salutation of an angel, that it was completed by the bitter passion and death of my divine son, and that it was established and secured by his glorious resurrection. The remedy, therefore, of so many evils shall be the meditation on the mysteries of the life, death, and glory of my Son, uniting thereto the angelic salutation by which the great mystery of redemption was announced to the world. She then explained to St. Dominic how this devotion was to be practiced and continued by means of the rosary. She said, The earth shall remain barren, till watered by the heavenly dews of this devotion. You are to preach this devotion as a practice of piety most dear to my son and to me, as a most powerful means of dissipating heresy, extinguishing vice, spreading virtue, imploring the divine mercy, and obtaining my protection. I desire that this manner of prayer shall be perpetually promoted and practiced. The faithful shall obtain by it numberless benefits and shall always find me ready to aid them in all their wants. This is the precious gift which, through you, I bequeath to the world. To St. Matilda, Our Lady said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. No creature has ever said anything that was more pleasing to me, nor will anyone ever be able to find or say to me anything that pleases me more. Now, what have God's holy ones said of the rosary? Today, we will start with St. Bernadine of Siena. You must know that when you say, Hail Mary, she immediately greets you. Don't think that she is one of those rude women of whom there are so many. On the contrary, she is utterly courteous and pleasant. If you greet her, she will answer you right away and converse with you. Blessed Alain de Roque said, The Holy Rosary is the storehouse of countless blessings. Pope Nicholas V taught, The rosary is the tree of life which raises the dead, heals the diseased, and preserves those who are in health. 
St. Alphonsus de Liguori, doctor of the church and the author of highly edifying spiritual books on our Lord, our Lady, and our salvation, including the glories of Mary, made a vow to pray the rosary every day, insisting that it was necessary for salvation. He once referred to the vision of the Virgin to St. Dominic, in which she commanded him to preach her Psalter, and then said, quote, And indeed, the saint preached it everywhere, and this devotion was embraced by all Catholics, so that at the present day there is no devotion more practiced by the faithful of every condition than that of the Most Holy Rosary. He also wrote of the great good, which is well known, which, quote, this noble devotion has brought to the world how many by its means have been freed from sin how many led to a holy life how many have had a good death and are now saved let us read the various books which treat of it it is enough to know that this devotion has been approved by the holy church and the sovereign pontiffs have attached indulgences to it Unquote. Pope Leo XIII, who wrote 12 encyclicals and five apostolic letters on the rosary, prescribed the public prayer throughout the Catholic world of both the Holy Rosary and the Litany of Loretto, and who also added to the same litany the title Queen of the Holy Rosary, said of the rosary so many inspiring words about it that time constrains me to share only a few of his quotes. Considering that many of his time had already begun to doubt the history of the story about St. Dominic, Our Lady, and the Rosary, it is highly relevant that he, a sovereign pontiff of the Church, clarified, the origin of this form of prayer is divine rather than human. He further taught, we may well believe that the Queen of Heaven herself has granted an especial efficacy, meaning help, to this mode of supplication, the rosary, for it was by her command and counsel that the devotion was begun and spread abroad by the holy patriarch Dominic as a most potent weapon against the enemies of the faith at an epoch not, indeed, unlike our own, of great danger to our holy religion. And finally, he also wrote, The rosary is the most excellent form of prayer and the most efficacious means of attaining eternal life. It is the remedy for all our evils, the root of all our blessings. There is no more excellent way of praying. By the way, to ensure that you don't miss any of my new podcasts, please be sure to give this episode a thumbs up and then kindly, if you have not done so already, subscribe to Genesis 315. And for those two actions, I sincerely thank you. To continue, Pope St. Pius X said, The rosary is the most beautiful and the most rich in graces of all prayers. It is the prayer that touches most the heart of the Mother of God. And if you wish peace to reign in your homes, recite the family rosary. Pius XII called the rosary a compendium of the gospel. Lucia of Fatima, the eldest surviving child of the visionaries of Our Lady of the Rosary, wrote, The Most Holy Virgin in these last times in which we live has given a new efficacy to the recitation of the rosary to such an extent that there is no problem, no matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or above all spiritual, in the personal life of each one of us, of our families, of the families of the world or of the religious communities, or even of the life of peoples and nations that cannot be solved by the rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. With the Holy Rosary, we will save ourselves, we will sanctify ourselves, we will console our Lord and obtain the salvation of many souls. Before her, St. Francis de the Sale stated, the greatest method of praying is to pray the rosary. St. Louis de Montfort, the apostle of true devotion to Jesus through Mary, wrote, When the Holy Rosary is said well, it gives Jesus and Mary more glory and is more meritorious than any other prayer. He also said this, If you say the rosary faithfully unto death, I do assure you that in spite of the gravity of your sins, you will receive a never-fading crown of glory. He also said this, Never will anyone who says his rosary every day become a formal heretic or be led astray by the devil. He said this too. If you persevere in reciting the rosary, this will be a most probable sign of your eternal salvation. And this. Recite your rosary with faith, with humility, with confidence, and with perseverance. 
For those who think themselves already condemned to eternal perdition, St. Louis de Montfort counseled, even if you are on the brink of damnation, even if you have one foot in hell, even if you have sold your soul to the devil as sorcerers do who practice black magic, and even if you are a heretic as obstinate as a devil, sooner or later you will be converted and will amend your life and will save your soul if... And mark well what I say, if you say the Holy Rosary devoutly every day until death for the purpose of knowing the truth and obtaining contrition and pardon for your sins. St. John Bosco insisted, where the Rosary is recited, there will be peace and tranquility. St. Bernadette of Lourdes humbly declared, in the evening when you go to sleep, hold your beads, doze off reciting them like babies who go to sleep in their mother's arms, mumbling, Mama, Mama. St. Teresa of Lisieux, the little flower, said, the rosary is a long chain that links heaven and earth. One end of it is in our hands, and the other end is in the hands of the Holy Virgin. The rosary prayer rises like incense to the feet of the Almighty. Mary responds at once like a beneficial dew, bringing new life to human hearts. St. Pio, whom we commonly refer to as Padre Pio, affirmed, some people are so foolish that they think they can go through life without the help of the Blessed Mother. Love the Madonna and pray the Rosary, for the Rosary is the weapon against the evils of the world today. These, my friends, were only some of the saints of God who spoke on the Rosary, testifying to a historical fact of centuries. After the Holy Mass, the Rosary is the prayer most pleasing to the Lord our God. In fact, the Church grants to those who pray the Rosary, under certain easy conditions, a plenary indulgence, which means the complete remission of temporal punishments of confessed sins. We can gain that plenary indulgence every day, and we can also offer to God that same indulgence for the poor and holy souls in purgatory. Naturally, there will be those who wonder, why is the rosary looked upon by God with such favor? Why is it a source of great graces for the faithful? And why is it enriched by the church with a plenary indulgence? As I wrote in my book, Fatima, The Signs and Secrets, the eminent theologian Father Gergo Larange compared the rosary to the four ends of the liturgy of the Mass when he wrote, quote, The rosary is more than a prayer of petition. It is a prayer of adoration inspired by the thought of the incarnate God, a prayer of reparation in memory of the passion of our Savior, a prayer of thanksgiving that the glorious mysteries continue to reproduce themselves in the uninterrupted entry of the elect into glory, unquote. Before him, one of the best explanations I've ever read was given by the 19th century priest, Father Michael Muller, in his book, The Holy Rosary and the Five Scapulars. By the way, that book is economically available as a Kindle book at Amazon, and in the event that you're interested, in the description box of this podcast, I will have included a link. To cite Father Muller, quote, Men are grateful to their fellow men grateful even to animals, but to be thankful toward God, their greatest benefactor, seems unaccountably to have fallen out of most men's practical religion altogether. If we have reason to pity God, if we may dare so to speak with St. Alphonsus, because men sin against his loving majesty, still more reason have we to do so when we see how scanty and how cold are the thanksgivings offered up to him. To stop these evils in their source, to apply a remedy to them, God, through his blessed mother, gave to the children of his church the devotion of the rosary as a memorial of his great benefits and as a prayer of thanksgiving for the same. The 15 mysteries of the rosary are a short commemoration of the life, sufferings, and triumphant victory of Jesus Christ. And the creed, recited at the beginning of the rosary, is a short catechism containing the principal truths which he taught us. And the prayer, glory be to the Father, etc., is one of the best acts of thanksgiving that can be offered to the Blessed Trinity for the divine benefits. Thus, the rosary teaches us every day to think of Jesus and Mary and be grateful to them, and to think of them and be grateful to them is to love them. And to love God and show gratitude toward him is the end of all religion, the very essence of Christianity." Unquote. There are so many more other quotes that can be shared about the Holy Rosary, but for today, I will close with the following excerpts from letters written by Sister Lucia of Fatima. From these selections, we may gain further edifying and instructive insights into the Rosary. These passages, by the way, are those which I have taken care to include in my book, Fatima, The Science and Secrets. 
Quote, Our Lady requested and recommended that the rosary be prayed every day, having repeated this in all the apparitions, as if forewarning us that in these times of diabolical disorientation, we must not let ourselves be deceived by false doctrines that diminish the elevation of our souls to God by means of prayer. For certain, it is not necessary that during the celebration of the holy sacrifice of the Mass that one pray the holy rosary, for beside time set aside for the holy Mass, we must also put aside time for praying the Holy Rosary. We can and should take part in the one without forsaking the other. The Rosary is for the majority of souls who live in the world their daily spiritual bread, and to deprive them or draw them away from this prayer is to decrease in their minds the appreciation and good faith with which they pray. All the prayers that we say in the Rosary are prayers that form part of the sacred liturgy. More than a prayer directed to Our Lady, it is a prayer directed to God. The Our Father was taught to us by Jesus Christ, who said, Pray thus, Our Father, who art in heaven, etc. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, is the hymn sung by the angels, who were sent by God to announce the birth of His Word, God made man. The Hail Mary, when well understood, is nothing less than a prayer directed to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. I hail thee, Mary, because the Lord is with thee. These words were most certainly dictated by the Father in heaven to the angel when he sent him to earth in order that these words that he, the angel, should greet Mary. So this salutation, meaning the Hail Mary prayer, is an act of praise addressed to God. Blessed art thou amongst women because blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, and because thou art the mother of God made man. In thee we adore God as in the first tabernacle in which the Father enclosed his word, as on the first altar, thy lap, as in the first monstrance, thy arms, before which the angels, shepherds, and kings knelt to adore the Son of God made man. Sister Lucia also alluded to a mystery of the Holy Trinity, as well as a mystery of Our Lady's earthly life and her life in heaven when she wrote, quote, Since thou art a tabernacle, a monstrance, a living temple, permanent home of the Most Holy Trinity, Mother of God and Our Mother, pray for us poor sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Until the next time, may God bless you, and may Our Lady Mary keep you and yours under her starry mantle. Salve, Regina.